These are the gifts that are yours from God our Father and our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, in this 16th chapter of John's Gospel, we read last week Jesus promising his disciples the gift of the Holy Spirit. He said that he would be leaving them for a little while, and then he would return in a little while. In the meantime, they were given the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit to connect them to Christ himself, the Holy Spirit to, by, by his work, to sanctify them in their faith as Jesus had ascended into heaven. In other words, in his absence, he would make himself present with them by his Holy Spirit. Today, Jesus continues this same speech by saying that he would give them something else. By giving them the Holy Spirit, he also gives them the gift of prayer. And by giving them this gift, most certainly he gives us this gift as well. He says, while I'm away, you can go directly to my Father and ask him for whatever you need. Whatever you ask of my Father, he will give it to you if you ask in my name. You have access to God the Father. Therefore, when you come to my Father, Jesus says, in my name, he will give you whatever you ask. You can approach God's throne with full confidence that he will not only hear you, but he will answer you, and he will give you whatever you ask. Now, as dear children ask their dear loving Father, that is how we go to the throne of grace. We do not go in fear and trembling as a master goes, as a servant goes to his master, or as a subject goes to his king, but rather we go as dear children would go and ask their daddy for something. He gives us with the ability to pray and to speak to our Father, that in those prayers, Jesus also may be present with us. As we pray in Jesus' name, it is as though Jesus himself were asking his Father for these gifts. It should cause us to pause. As Jesus says, whatever you ask in my name, my Father will give you, should give us pause to ask the question, what would we ask for? What should we ask for? Jesus says, whatever you ask, God will give. Of course, our sinful nature, our old Adam, our selfishness might incline us to ask for things such as more wealth, a bigger house, a nicer car. I'd really like to win the lottery, maybe the Powerball, maybe take early retirement. Yes, all of these worldly requests, all of these requests of this world, things that would make me perhaps joyful in this life, may, might be the things that I would be inclined to ask for. But these kinds of requests treat God like the blue genie from Aladdin, like he is simply here to grant our wishes and he is compelled to grant you those wishes he must grant you those wishes because after all Aladdin has set the genie free it puts us in the driver's seat it puts us in the position of power as if we were the ones who told God what to do but our wishes our desires by sin our sinful desires and selfish wishes, and such sinful wishes could never be asked in the name of Jesus. 
You see, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the name of Jesus is a name that we know because of what he has done for us. We know the name of Jesus and we identify it with sacrifice, with selflessness. Indeed, we identify the name of Jesus with the cross. The name of Jesus is a name of love, of grace, and mercy. And therefore, to pray in the name of Jesus means to pray that our wishes and our desires would conform to his will, his wishes, that we would want what Jesus wants. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we are seeing the effects already, but as summer approaches, we must ask ourselves, will this summer be a summer of what we want, according to our selfish, sinful nature, or will it be what he wants for us, according to our new nature in Christ? What do we want this summer to bring? We want the summer to bring time for travel, relaxation, maybe relaxing even from going to church on Sunday morning, taking some time off, taking a few weeks for me, maybe even taking a few weeks off from our giving and putting that money into something that we want. Unfortunately, this is the trend not only in our church, but in many churches. Attendance during the summer goes down significantly, and with attendance, so does giving, and so does faithful worship and receiving of the good gifts of God. Receiving the gifts that God so desperately wants to give you in His Word and Sacrament. So I ask you, could this be the summer that we pray in the name of Jesus. Our prayers in the name of Jesus should always be prayers for more of Jesus and not less of Jesus. More of his gifts, more of his word and sacrament, more of his grace. We should always want more of him and less of the world because indeed, as Jesus says, he has overcome the world. Jesus lives, the victories won. We just sang it. And if Jesus has overcome the world, then why does our sinful nature want so desperately to cling to the loser? Why does our sinful nature want to cling to the things of this world when Jesus has already claimed victory over them? Indeed, beginning next week, Memorial Day weekend, maybe even beginning this week, by the looks of things, the pews will thin out, the offerings will decrease, and our faith, many, many people's faith, will starve. I pray that it may not be so. My prayer for this congregation, for each of you, for each of you by name, in the name of Jesus, would, that you would, would be that you would come here in the name of Jesus to ask and receive God's great gifts, the riches that he has given for you each and every week. His blessings are certainly not of this world. In fact, a prayer in the name of Jesus might, be in, might include a prayer to have the grace to accept the afflictions of this world. Grace to accept the sufferings, the poverty, the tribulation that comes as a follower of Christ. Perhaps a Christian prayer might be for a smaller house, a clunker of a car, losing the lottery. That is, if you play the lottery. Don't play the lottery. One pastor friend of mine used to pray every time the Powerball was announced. He used to pray a prayer of thanks that no one in his congregation won the Powerball. A prayer of thanks because he recognized that by winning that lottery, no joy 
could truly be found. The only true joy is found in Christ. And all too often, if you follow these stories, the people that win the lottery, they win the Powerball, their lives end in destruction. They end in broken relationships with their children. They end in divorce. They end in all sorts of unhappiness. Something that we think might make us so happy in this world instead brings great tribulation. And so, Lord, we pray, help us to trust in you and your will. Help us to trust in you and you alone. In this, we find true joy. In this, our joy may be full. Yes, it is often in suffering, in tribulation, that we recognize the limits of this world and we turn instead to God and to Christ. Because in Christ, that is where our true joy is found. Scripture says that for the joy set before Christ, he endured the cross. Jesus went to the cross fully filled with joy because he knew what going to the cross would accomplish for you and for me, for our salvation. And so we also, when we pray in Jesus' name, we ask according to God's will, in Jesus' name, that he would also give us grace to joyfully endure our crosses, our tribulation, in order that we may be identified with the sufferings of Christ. Because, my brothers and sisters in Christ, anyone who suffers with Christ, indeed, anyone who dies with Christ, will also rise with Christ. This is where we say with great joy as Christians, Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Tribulation in your life? Rejoice. Because your joy may be full, may be fully realized in the will and the wishes of Jesus, of God the Father, who is using these trials and tribulations to separate you from the world and to bring you to Christ. Indeed, this is our prayer in the name of Jesus, that we would have more of Jesus and less of the world. For indeed... Jesus has overcome the world. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds. In Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.